Hello, lovely people! Jim the Game Guru. In this video, let's do some monster ranching with tiny epic dinosaurs. You have tiny epic dinosaurs, super cute artwork in this. Very, very, very tiny, teeny tiny little box. Easy portable portability. Uh, this game also comes with a bunch, like 75, I believe, 75 little tiny wooden uh, dinosaur meeples. And, and the game area is actually pretty large. It uses a lot of cards, these little mat cards that we will lay out on the table and it creates a kind of big playing area. This is by Gameland. They, they specialize in a lot of these tiny epic games in which they try to provide big board game experience inside of a tiny, tiny package. Now, if you're interested whatsoever in purchasing this, do not go through Amazon. Don't go through Amazon. Whatever you do, do not go through Amazon because the deluxe version of the game is only available on their main website, Gameland's website. And the, the deluxe version, which this is, comes with laboratory. It is an expansion for the game. And it's a little bit of, of a, it's a little misleading because the box on Amazon looks just like the box here for the deluxe edition. So I'm gonna go through a quick 1v1 scenario. It, the game is played through six rounds and I'm gonna do two rounds. I'm just gonna do two rounds to show you really quickly with two players and showing you how the mechanics are. It's beautiful artwork in the game, super cute. A lot of components are very, very tiny, obviously to fit in a tiny package. But let's go ahead and roll into it. If you guys are new to this channel, please consider subscribing. All right, let's dig into some tiny epic dinosaurs. So here, as you can see, as I said earlier in the video, that it's amazing how a ginormous playing area has been created with the components in the box. And you can see how it uses a, actually a center action mats plus player mats. And so we have a contract mat up here where you can actually, in this game, you can actually fulfill contracts with your dinosaurs in order to earn additional victory points. This game is all victory points based. And here we have a research area where you can get research cards and really cool artwork, like I said earlier. And this particular research card is a unique dinosaur. So this game includes standard dinosaurs and unique dinosaurs. And then you have other research cards like this that will give you kind of tools that you can use during specific rounds of the game. The midsection here has a bunch of action mats. You have this, le this left one here kind of dictates the round and it goes from like round one all the way down to round six. And this little cute little token here it says, I love dinos. It's like a little coffee mug. Yeah, this is actually placed on the round number and used to indicate the round as you go down. So you, you have different phases in each round. So, so, so you have a resource collection, assign ranchers, retrieve ranchers, arrange ranch, feed dinosaurs, breed dinosaurs, which is really cool. You can breed dinosaurs in this game and refresh for the next round. And I will go into each one of those round, the, those, each one of those phases as we're playing through each round. In the center here, you have these action mats where you actually put down a, a worker. So you have like these little tiny worker. Well, in this game, they're called rangers. You put these little rangers down, you put them on a spot. And then what happens is you actually in, invoke the action there. So like this, for example, here being one of the cards. If I were to put a ranger here, I would get two plants. And if I put one here, I would get two meat and then two of the crates if I put one right there. These other ones give you other things, like on this contract one, if I were to put an agent here, I would be able to try to fulfill one of the contracts on the board. And the way you get victory points in this game is with the dinosaurs that are on in your ranch. And then the other way, I'm gonna bring this up a little bit so you guys can see that a little bit. I know I have that cut off there. And then the other way is by fulfilling contracts. So you have these contracts here. 
So if you can, if I, if, if I fulfill this contract, which means that I turn in a red, blue, and a yellow dinosaur, I'll end up getting 13 victory points. And there's no victory point tracker, if you notice on the board, there's no victory point tracker. That is because you will end up holding these cards as you fulfill them. So then at the very end, you're going to count the victory points from your dinosaurs on your ranch, and you're also going to count the victory points uh, from your contracts. So you have contracts up there you need to fulfill. You have research cards here that you can get. And and then there are additional dinosaurs, like this one we'll actually get. And, and the one thing that's really cool is there's this Wrangler die right here, right? So if you don't do research to generate your own unique dinosaur and you want to go get an, a standard dinosaur, you can go into the field to get dinosaurs as if you were going out there and, and catching them out in the wild. So whenever you go here for the free range dinos, you'll get a dinosaur and then you roll this die to then get an additional effect. Either one is you immediately send your ranchers and your dinosaur to medical leave if you get the claws. Um, if you get the net, you have just no additional effect. And if you get the egg, you gain an additional dinosaur of the space type, which is really cool. And then there's a dino market. If you go to the dino market down here, you can actually put your agent here. And then if you turn in one of the crates, then you can end up getting any single one of, of the dinosaurs. I feel like the free range is probably worth it the most um, because it's you have the chance of getting an additional dino if you roll this egg just right or this die this die just right. Uh, a lot of the tokens are really cute looking. Look at this is the indicator for the meat, as you can see, and then you have the indicator for the crate. Each person has their own indicator, which goes on their board right here. And this right here is an indicator. And I'll show you here in a second. There's the one with the leaf. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you. So this is what one of the boards looks like. And what happens is you get an indicator from 1 all the way to 13 of your resources. So this is your resources indicator. And any, ran any ranchers you have left to be placed down on the board go or go here. Uh, then this is a holding area whenever you get any kind of dinosaurs. You'll actually put them in this holding area. And then later on in a different phase of the turn, they'll go from the holding area onto your ranch. On the right side here of the card, they actually indicate the point values of your dinos. So a Stegosaurus, Velociraptor, Bronchiosaurus, and Allosaurus. All of these are worth different points. The Stegos being the last and the Allosaurus being the most. And it also shows you what they eat. So there is actually, um, even though this is worth more points, the red dino, the Allosaurus, it actually consumes twice as many resources. The Brachiosaurus consumes twice as many resources as well um, for the trade-off of having more points. What you need to do is there's constantly times where you're going to have to turn in the dinosaurs. You got to turn them in in order to get to fulfill some of these contracts. And then there are times where you're going to turn in a dinosaur to maybe get some kind of special ability somewhere. And then there are times where a dinosaur could escape, and which is really interesting because when you have escaping dinosaurs, they kind of inflict penalties that you have to try to satisfy. And when those dinosaurs escape, then they're gone as well. Up here, you can see you have different piles of dinosaurs, you got each one representing the ones that are on here, the Velociraptor, Stegosaurus, Brachiosaurus, and Allosaurus. So here they are. Then you have the purple pile here that represents the unique dinosaurs you get from the research. And then you have these, which are um, kind of your, bar your barricades. Because in this game, what you need to do is you can't have the same type of, you cannot have the same type of dinosaur in the same pen as other dinosaurs. Um, that is an illegal move. You cannot put that in there like that. Two places here, one for one player and one for the other. Let's go ahead and go through the game. Well, before we do that really fast, I'm gonna show you the manual. The manual is a beautiful, absolutely awesome. Tiny epic dinosaurs, look at that. Very well made. Nice and colorful, it tells you. It, it's actually the setup. It goes into the setup, which is actually kind of uh, detailed. It's actually a pretty detailed game, considering that it's something so, in such a small package. 
I mean, you'd think that the manual would be like super, super small and super simple or whatever. No, I mean, there's different because it goes into each one of the phases all the way up through feeding your dinosaurs and your escaping dinosaurs here lists out. Uh, then your breeding of your dinosaurs and then even the free freshing of the round. Um, but yeah, this is, it's pretty awesome. Uh, what, what do we got here? So, and, and, oh, right here, th at the very end of the manual, this game also has solo play. So in this end of this manual, it actually goes through a solo play mode if you want to play by yourself. So super cool. Not a whole lot of games offer solo play. I mean, yeah, I mean, th there are games out there that have solo play, and this is one of the few of them. So um, I like that. No co-op play in this. This is all kind of competitive, and it's just a matter of who gets the most victory points at the very end of the game. All right, so let's go ahead and start with this player right here. We've got uh, we got four different type of ranchers. We can move this. There's actually a bigger one, and one of them, one of them is your lead rancher, and your other one is just your regular rancher. Now, one thing that's really cool about this game is that whenever you put a rancher somewhere on one of these action spots you cannot put another rancher in the same spot. So if you put one here, so if I put, if I put that there later on, I can't put another one of mine there. Now, your opponent can though, but the interesting thing about this is that if you have a rancher on a spot and your opponent wants to use it, they have to actually beat the number of ranchers you have there by one. So like if green put it here, then blue would have to put two on this spot in order to use that spot. So that's one thing you don't find very often in a lot of worker placement games is usually they have a rule that if there's somebody there, they're there. You, no matter who tries to put a worker down, you can't put them in the same spot. But this game allows you to do it. It allows you to do it, but there is a penalty in that the penalty is you have to beat the number of rangers that are already there. The lead ranger counts for two. That is the one exception in this game. So if I put this lead ranger down, then somebody else wants to put something down. They have to put down three. They have to put down three in the same spot, not just two, because the lead rangers count for two. Uh, this is your first person player token. It's like a little egg, which is kind of cute. I love it. Kind of indicates who goes first. Uh, did I cover the laboratories? Oh, no, I didn't cover laboratory. So in the deluxe edition, you get laboratory. And that's the one thing I was talking about. Don't buy it on Amazon because Amazon doesn't have a deluxe version of this game. Well, if you buy it from Gamelin's website themselves, they have a laboratory expansion that comes with additional research cards. And it also comes up with this additional player mats to kind of extend the game with additional functionality which is super, super, super cool. It's got like a little manual in there. I'm not gonna be using this today in today's video, um, but yeah, this is why you wanna buy it from Gamelin's website because you can get this expansion with the deluxe edition. All right, so the first thing that, the first phase is resource collection. So resource collection happens by the resources that you have on your ranch. So here you have a ranch. I have a number of those resources there. I have a crate. Looks like one, two, three, four, five um, veggie sources, three meats, and one crate. Okay, so that's what my ranch starts off. These are the resources you can collect. And as you start putting dinos down into your um, into your ranch, what happens is whenever there's a dinosaur in one of these spots, then you won't be able to collect those resources there. Those will be they will be kind of they're, they're, those resources basically vo will be voided until you get rid of the dinosaur that's in that spot. And these dash lines that are in the ranch here, these little dash lines you can see. I don't know if you can see them. Bring this up a little bit. Yeah, there we go. So the dash lines that are in there, these are where you put the barricades. So this mountain counts as a barricade. The water counts as a barricade. This counts as a default barricade when you first start, and these and then these here you have to barricade as you go as you pick up barricades okay so let's go ahead with green uh oh no let's go ahead and do the resources so we got five so each person gets five veggies three meats and one box okay so one box five every every single person because the mats are all the same even though some of these might be layered like differently like this blue ranch is 
has a little di di different design, but it still has five veggies, three meats, and one of the crates. So one crates, three meats. Okay, now, after we do the resource collection, we get to the second phase, which is assign the ranchers. So you go one by one, each player, turn by turn, assigns a rancher. So for this guy, I think what I'm going to do is, what am I going to do here? I'm just, I'm going to go right here. I'm going to, I'm going to put him on this right here where you can go ahead and free range and collect and get one of these Velociraptors. So we'll get one of these Velociraptors, which is a meat eater. We'll stick them in a holding pen. Well, we got a, right here, actually the holding area. We can go ahead and with a roll the die, see what he gets. Ooh, I got an egg. Look at that. I got an egg. So that means I get another one of these guys. Holy cow. Wow. I just got two of those dinosaurs. We put them both in the holding area. Um, and if, let me see if I can bring this up so you can see it a little bit easier. So this is what that Velociraptor looks like. Pretty cool. I like it. Uh, so we have that there. We each get a private contract too. So this private contract right here is if I turn these four different dinos, I'll get 17. Uh, these are face down. You keep them, you keep them hid hidden. Now, the one thing to remember in this game is that you, you cannot fulfill a private contract in this game unless you fulfill a public contract first during that turn. So that's why, like, so you can see there's a big stack of public, right? A big stack of public contracts. And then there's a super tiny stack of private. And that's because these are hard as hell to turn it to actually complete because you need to turn them in at the same turn as you turn, as you claim a public contract. So you have to have a lot of dinosaurs basically, because if you turn in a, a bunch of dinosaurs to get one of these public contracts fulfilled, then you need to have enough left over to fulfill one of these private ones. All right, so blue's gonna go ahead and go and like I said, I'm only going to do two rounds real quick to show you guys. Um, he's going to go, uh, he's going to go right here. He's going to go right here. He's just going to get himself a barricade. Okay. So he's going to get himself a barricade. Put it right here in the holding uh, area. Okay. Uh, what else? So now green's going to go ahead now and go. And what are they going to do? Um, I think what they're going to do probably is go right here and I'm gonna turn in my one box. So this is my meter, right? So I'm turning in my one box. I have zero boxes left and I'm gonna get two barricades. So green gets two barricades and put them right there. Perfect. Now blue goes and what they're gonna do is they're going to go to, um, they're gonna go right here. They're gonna get two more resources of meat to put them at five, okay? Green's going to go, and they'll go right here. They're going to get another meat source as well. So there's there's increments to four because you got to feed your dinosaurs. That's one thing you got to remember in this game. You have to feed your dinosaurs at when, when it comes to the feeding phase. So blue's going to go again. Uh, what is he going to do? He's probably going to go over here and try to get a dinosaur. Let's go for the Allosaurus. Okay, so he gets an Allosaurus. We're gonna put that in the holding area. You can see the Allosaurus here. Rawr. Allosaurus dinosaur. These pieces are very, very tiny. So if you have like ginormous hands or any kind of disability with like your hands, I will probably say that this would be a very difficult, a challenging game. Probably not impossible to play, but challenging. Because um, I'm having some time, a hard time picking up some of these pieces because they're so, they're so tiny. Um, so who's going now? Okay, green's going again. Oh no, wait a minute. He's got to roll the die because I went because I went here to get a free range dino. Let's see what happens. Oh, net. So the net means nothing. If you roll the net, it means absolutely nothing bad happens or good. Uh, so go ahead. This agent goes again now. Um, let's go here. He's going to collect two boxes. So he's going to collect two boxes. Now blue goes. They're going to go here and they're going to collect a box as well. So both players now have two two boxes. Blue has a little bit more resources. 
when it comes to the meat, but they're pretty much pretty close in resources. Okay, so now we are done placing all of the rangers. Now then the on round on the phase three on this round, we're gonna take back all the ranchers from the action match. And here we go. And so we're gonna put these back into our cards. Take them all off the action mats. And from the medical leave spots, but we didn't have any in the medical leave. And then the very next thing we're gonna do is we're going to arrange our ranch. Now, what this means is we can take our dinosaurs from our holding area and we can put them now on our ranch. Let me see if we can move this up a little bit because I know I have that down there. Now let's put them on our ranch. So I'm gonna put this probably here. I'll put this here, so I have those two there. Now this dinosaur is covering up one of the, the plant's resources, so I'll get one less plant. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna close off this little pen right here with that barricade, which is pretty cool. I love how you can put the like, little barricades and little dinosaurs wherever you want here. And that's it. I have another barricade too. I'm probably going to put this barricade like this, just like that. Okay. So now this guy is going to go, he's going to put his, uh, his lovely little, uh, Allosaurus down somewhere. Where are we going to put this Allosaurus though? Let's put him, let's put him right here. We're gonna put him right here and then we're gonna put the barricade right here as well. So now this part of this, his ranch is completely sealed in as a pen. You gotta remember, you gotta seal in your dinosaurs in a pen because when they're not sealed in, uh, bad things can happen because they can't mix with other dinosaurs, okay? So the next one is we go to feed the dinosaurs. So I have two meat eaters, so this person's meat goes down to two. This person's got a, he's, this person's got an Allosaurus, which feeds, that requires two meat. So he goes from five to three on the meat. No, no herbivores, so the herbivore counter does not go down whatsoever. All right, so next what we're gonna do, so if, oh, and, and here's the thing with escaping dinosaurs. If you cannot feed a dinosaur, then that's when the escaping of the dinosaur comes into place. Um, but right now, what happened was I was able to feed all my dinosaurs, so none, so none of them were actually trying to escape. Uh, okay, so then we go on to breeding dinosaurs. For each two of the same dinosaur in an, encl an enclosure, gain and place a newborn dinosaur on to your ranch. Well, look at this. I have two Velociraptor here. So I gain a dinosaur. Now the one rule with this is in, in breeding is that you cannot breed a newborn, right? And for obvious reasons. So if you gain a dinosaur through breeding and put it into your into a, an enclosure where there's an, another, another dinosaur of the same type, and then all of a sudden you have two there, that does not count as two dinosaurs there in order for you to be able to breed. Because in order to breed dinosaurs in this game, you have to have two in the same enclosure. These two are already there. So newborns do not count. All right, so I'm gonna put this one right here. And the reason why I'm putting this one right here is because I don't want this dinosaur to escape because if I don't have any other enclosures, Everything else is like open. Um, okay, so there you go. We got breeding, and now we're going to do a, re a refresh. Now, during the refresh, what happens is you'll end up taking contracts. Like, let's say if one of those things contracts were, were were taken, because you don't refresh these contract cards. So let's say if if one of the players took one of these contract cards, right? Because they discarded these dinosaurs, they end up getting this card, right? This spot where that card is, that card was, does not get, you don't get a new card there. It doesn't get refreshed until you hit this refresh for next round phase. But 
nobody claimed, nobody ended up claiming a contract whatsoever. No one ended up getting a research card whatsoever. So though these are still the same cards and where they're at, okay? And then now what happens is the next round begins. So in the next round, what happens is we calculate the resources that we're gonna get. So I so green does not get a box and they do not get a a a um a veggie because dinosaurs are there but they do get one two three four veggies which takes this veggie up to nine and then they do get three meats which takes their ve their meats to to um, five and then blue over here he's got so this meat spot unfortunately a dinosaur is there so he, he doesn't claim any meat there so he gets two meat for the, the other two meats so he goes to five because he was at three already and then he gets five veggies which takes him to 10 for veggies. This guy might actually go for like a, uh, for a, um, a, a, a herbivore this time. And he gets one box. So he goes up to three. Perfect. All right, so this person still has a first player counter here. The, the, there is a way to steal this first, play, first person token. So anyone who has this goes first during that round. Oh, let me increment this round too. So this round token now slides down to two. I love that round token, it's so cute. So the only way to get this first person token is if you put a worker right here. That is the way to steal and snag this first person token. Um, okay, so green goes first because they still have the, to the first person player token. And let's go, and they're gonna go here. He's gonna get himself a Brachiosaurus, okay? That goes into his pen. He's gonna go ahead and roll the die in a net so nothing happens. Now blue's gonna go, uh, blue needs some, I think blue wants a barricade. He needs some barricades so we can expand a little bit. So he's gonna go right here. He's gonna get himself a barricade, put it here. Uh, now let's go ahead and green's gonna go and do what? What is green gonna do here? Probably gonna go right here to get two boxes. So his box count goes to four. Blue is gonna go, uh, they don't really see, I don't need a lot of food and stuff for blue. Blue is pretty solid on the food. He might go, what blue might do is he might go here and turn in a box to get himself two barricades. So now he's got three barricades that he can put wherever he wants on his ranch, which is pretty awesome. Green's gonna go, there's no way that they can get a barricade, which kind of screwed up green, because now green can't get a barricade, because the action spots that are left on here for rearranging bar your barricades and that is it. Um, green's gonna go right here. They're gonna rearrange their barricade and get the first person token, but they already have the first player token, so it just stays there. I'm gonna rearrange this barricade just like that, so it's flat across like this. All right, so blue goes now. He cannot fulfill a contract, uh, but he might take one of these cards. Uh, okay, let's do this. Let's go to... Here we go. So blue's gonna go here, and he's gonna get himself the Diplodocus. Di I don't even know how to say that. Diplodocus? Diplodocus, I guess. And he's gonna get this dinosaur, which is really cool. It's a unique dinosaur. And then as long as this dinosaur is on the board, then what happens is he'll get a special ability. And the special ability is gain any one resource for each of your ranchers leaving medical leave. But this dinosaur takes two veggies to feed so he's gonna put this dinosaur down here this card right here or you know what maybe I'll, I'll put the card over here so you guys can still see it so that's his dinosaur i'm gonna grab the the thing that indicates what he looks like i think it's this one yep right here take a look at that how cool is that and i'm gonna put that dinosaur here in the holding area that is so cool I need a, and, and I'll have no problem putting a pen up for him. Now, the one thing about these unique dinosaurs that are neat is that you don't need to have them, they could be in the open area without escaping. They, they are, um, that's one of the unique rules about them. I guess they're kind of smart dinosaurs, I don't know. Alrighty, so green goes what's green gonna do maybe what i'll do is i'll just grab some more meat i'll double my meat go to seven 
And then blue is going to go and get himself another box. So this box increments to three. And then now we go to the next phase, which is retrieve the ranchers. Give me my ranchers back. Okay, ranchers go back. And I don't know if I said this before, but whenever you get to round four, there's additional ranchers here. And whenever you get to round four, you end up getting these ranchers, this extra rancher. So round four will make will give you extra actions from that point forward, one extra action. So let's go ahead and move these rangers back. Now, after, we re after we've uh, retrieved the rangers, what we're gonna do is we're going to arrange our ranch. So this guy is gonna put his Brachiosaurus right there and this pen which is really really nice um oh boy and he's got the ability to breed when we get to the breeding phase he's got an ability to breed these velociraptor but i think that that newborn is going to escape because he's got no place to put them what a shame um okay so we get some and this guy i'm going to put this dinosaur out here that dinosaur, like I said, the unique dinosaurs, they do not need to be in, a, in an enclosure, so they're good. Let me go ahead and set up some of these barricades. I'm going to go like this, and then I'm going to set up a barricade like that. So there we go. We've got barricade there, barricade there, and barricade there. How fantastic. Awesome. So now I've got one, two additional pens to put dinosaurs in. Okay. Oh, I actually got this pen over here too, which is great. Uh, what else do we got? Um, okay, so that's it. So what we 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 went we went ahead and arranged. Now we're gonna go ahead and feed our dinosaurs. So these this person has three meters, so he goes from seven meat all the way down to four, right? Uh, he also has a one that eats two veggies, so he goes from nine veggies to seven. This person has a dinosaur that eats two vegetables from your unique dinosaurs so he eats two vegetables and goes down to eight and then he's got a meat eater that eats two two meats and goes from five to three meats and there you are so breeding the dinosaurs this person cannot breed dinosaurs this person can but unfortunately the dinosaur that they're going to breed will escape because i have an open area and there's just no enclosure to put them in unfortunately then what happens, you go ahead and do the refresh. The refresh happens. So now go ahead and pull an extra card for research. Okay, it looks like it's another tool. This one's ex ex enclosure upgrades. You do, not, you do not discard barriers or dinosaurs due to escaping dinosaur pen penalties. Wow, that's awesome. That is an awesome ass card. Wow. So if you end up getting that one, that's, that's beautiful. Um, now, what would happen if you ended up turning in this dinosaur, this unique purple dinosaur, right? What happens is this would go back in the pile, and then this dinosaur card that you get for this dinosaur goes into the discard pile over here for research. So this card indicates this dinosaur, and they're out at the same time whenever they're out. Uh, the minute one of them goes, they both go. And so there, there's nothing in contracts that I have to refresh because none of these were satisfied. These contracts, I probably would have, if I was doing a real game, I probably would have focused more on the contracts. So instead of going for so many Velociraptors over here, I probably would have done an Allosaurus and then the Brachio just to, to be able to fulfill like one of these contracts. Um, or maybe I would have gone for the Stegosaurus instead of the Velociraptor. I probably would have gone for the Stegosaurus. So then that way I can do the Allosaurus and Brachio and turn them in f to get one of these contracts. That's probably what, I've, what I would have done. But, you know, at least I kind of showed you how the cycle uh, occurs in this game. So now the refresh happens. These cards all kind of get refreshed. And then now this goes down to round three, just like that. And then we start again. We we start off with the resource collection. We assign our ranchers into these action spots. We retrieve the ranchers from there. We arrange our ranch. We feed our dinosaurs based on the ones we have in there. We breed them, and then we refresh. Um, and then you, you obviously pay any penalties for any dinosaurs that escape. And then you try to fulfill those cards. 
the uh, contract cards, and you can also get research cards along the way if you you know if you put your your ranger in sports in places where research cards are. Oh, you know what? I forgot to pay the the uh, the price for this research card when I went here to get that. This would have costed this person a meat and a veggie, so which is which is okay because now I'm, I'm I adjusted it to be correct. I didn't see this one little thing at the bottom there, but yeah, you do have to pay a meat and a veggie. This one you have to pay any kind of dinosaur in order to to grab that ability, uh, to to grab that card. Um, but yeah, that's how you play epic dinosaurs. Awesome, colorful board, really easy as you go through the phases. And I love how you arrange your little, um, your ranch here with your dinosaurs. And you just try to get victory points. And at the very end, what happens is, so once we get down, done the sixth round, what's going to happen is, you're, and, and we go to the, the victory point tally, you're going to flip this card over. And this, this is the card you use for final scoring. And what happens is you tally up the contracts you fulfilled. You tally up the research point cards because all the research cards also have victory points at the very bottom. So if this dinosaur stuck around the entire time with me, I would get three victory points for it because of the research card. Uh, you tally up each of the victory points for all of the dinosaurs you have in your ranch. And then after you tally all of those up, all three of those up, then you put your uh, ranger markers, whatever, you know, just grab some rangers and slap them onto where you have your points and that's it and then that's how you keep that's how you tally up the victory points at the very end to see who wins super easy game i love how they constructed it with these cards to be able to con con to be able to build your your playing area and your final scoring area but yeah that's it guys it's tiny epic dinosaurs it's i, I love it it's easy it's portable and um, even though it might be a little hard for people that have you know larger hands, like I said earlier, with the pieces being so so tiny. Um, but yeah, that's it. This is from Gameland. Ga uh, Gameland. It's Tiny Epic Dinosaurs, guys. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing. And I will see you later.